Uh, so if you weren't living under a rock this past weekend, uh, August 31st, 2014, basically a large number of celebrities had their iCloud accounts hacked and uh, a bunch of personal information and a bunch of personal photos were released out onto the internet and uh, all sorts of chaos ensued. So this affected celebrities like Kate Upton, Jennifer Lawrence, um, tons of others. And um, I'm really not going to be talking about that aspect of it too much, but I did want to walk in, uh, walk you through the different ways that this could have happened uh, to try to reassure you of both iCloud security and also um, maybe just bring some attention to the fact that iCloud and other online uh, tools like Google Drive or Dropbox are not as secure as people think and really require user interaction to be as secure as they can be. Uh, so let's get started with talking about the uh, particular attack that happened and maybe walking through some ways that it could have happened. Uh, to start with, we don't know how it happened yet. Uh, the particular issue wasn't released. Uh, there's no vulnerability that was released out to the public in association with this, uh, but I will walk through some of the other ways that uh, you know are being thrown around as potential issues that could have impacted this, uh, this release. Um, so the most likely scenario in this entire situation is that there was a combination of social engineering and the iCloud password reset functionality. Um, if you haven't used it before, basically you can log into iCloud, you can reset your password, and really the only thing you need to know are the answers to your security question, as well as um, an email address that you use to sign up, so your user ID for iCloud. And um, if you haven't set anything else up in terms of two-factor authentication, which I'll be getting to in a second, uh, that's really the whole process. Um, you just you, you can just sign on, you can reset your password, and that's pretty much it. So maybe that's the way that uh, this person was able to do this. It's probably the most likely scenario that they were able to use social engineering along with this password reset reset functionality. And um, the social engineering aspect of it is basically trying to determine the answers to those security questions. So if a celebrity had a question like, where did you meet your first... Uh, your first boyfriend or your first girlfriend, um, you know, that that kind of information is very publicly available, especially when you have high-profile individuals like the celebrities that were victims of this particular attempt. So uh, some other things that are being thrown around is that iCloud is not secure, that there's this huge flaw in iCloud that, you know, people were able to hack in and, you know, all of your information is at risk, blah, 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 blah. And while we don't know that that's 100% not the case, it's most likely not the case. So iCloud is under a lot of scrutiny. It's one of Apple's main products. It's a very rare situation that there would be a massive uh, hole in their security. Not saying it can't happen, but it's a very rare situation. Um, there was a flaw in the authentication system for iCloud uh, that went along with the find my iPhone or find my iPad, find my Mac device uh, functionality where you could basically exploit that feature to try to guess some of the information that was required to log in. I'm not really going to go into the technical details of that, but it's been fixed recently. But there has been some speculation as to uh, whether or not that was in use during this entire hacking attempt. Um, honestly, until the full report comes out from Apple, um, and until this individual releases more information about how they were able to do it, we're not going to know if they used it or not. Um, and as I mentioned, the very unlikely scenario that was that there was some kind of mass hacking attempt of iCloud, that everybody's passwords, or there was like a password breach, that the password database was dumped. Um, I'm not ruling it out entirely, but it's a very, very unlikely scenario. So that's kind of the uh, explain it like I'm five uh, summary of what happened this weekend to iCloud. Um, as of September 1st, Labor Day, the FBI was involved. There's a lot of press surrounding this incident, and understandably, a lot of the victims of this hacking situation are very upset that this happened, and there's a lot of rumors swirling around in terms of iCloud and the security of the cloud and all that kind of stuff. So this is really a great way to uh, lead into our next topic of how can I protect my own account. Um, chances are you have an iCloud account, you have a Dropbox account, you have a Google Drive account, and chances are, again, that you store personal information in those accounts, that you store personal pictures or personal documents or sensitive tax documents or literally anything under the sun in those accounts, that would be a very bad situation if that kind of information was able to get out into the public. So the first thing that we should do is enable two-factor authentication. 
if you haven't heard of it before, basically what two-factor authentication is, is a system that relies on the premise of you knowing some information and you having some information. Um, the thought and the theory is that those two things combined is, makes it very, very tough for an attacker to uh, break the security of your account. Obviously, the thing that you know is your password. Um, this isn't changing. Um, your password is still going to stay the same. But when you enable two-factor authentication on your iCloud account or your Google account or anything else, what that basically introduces into the mix is an additional piece of information that the hacker needs to understand and needs to have before they can log into your account. And usually that is in the form of a code that's sent to your phone. Um, this an entire situation operates on the premise that you have control over your phone. So if you lose your phone, obviously you should reset your passwords and disable them and unlink them from your account as soon as possible. Um, setting up two-factor authentication is very simple. Uh, you can open up the uh, iCloud website that's, or the Apple ID website that's listed here and you can go to the security section under where it says manage your security settings and click on the steps under two-step verification. It's going to ask you for a phone number first if you haven't provided one already. It's going to send you a code to that number to ensure that you have uh, control over that number. Once you enter that same code back into the page, it's going to show you a very, very long reset password. This is something you're going to want to write down or keep in a very safe place. And that code is what's used in case you ever lose track of your devices, uh, maybe your phone's stolen, etc., etc. And then finally, it's going to ask you whether or not you want to enable two-factor authentication. When you click yes, every time you log into your iCloud account online or through your Mac device or iPhone or iPad, it's going to ask you for that code, which will be sent to your phone. So it's a very, very easy way of setting up additional security for your account. Um, the second steps here are strong passwords, changed often. This goes along with any account, the entire internet that you sign up for. Strong passwords that you don't reuse anywhere else. Only use them one, one time use passwords. Um, these passwords obviously shouldn't be your name, your birth date, your kids' names, your pets' names, your address or really anything else that others would be able to figure out about you. And they should always contain a big combination of letters, numbers, passwords, or um, special symbols, and pretty much any other combination of things and words and phrases that you can think of. But the more complex, the better. Uh, finally, this could have played directly into the iCloud uh, hacking attempt that was uh, unleashed this weekend. And that is the issue of security questions. Obviously, you want to use very, very strong security questions. 99% um, of the security questions I see these days, you can log into somebody's Facebook profile, you can watch a YouTube video that they posted, and you can find the answers to those questions. Um, if the question is something like, where did you meet your significant other? Um, you know, make it something very, very specific. Don't just say, oh, I met them in Los Angeles. Say, I met them on, you know, Apple Street on the corner of 42nd and 10th, you know, whatever you need to do to make this a very specific answer to a very broad question. Try not to pick the simple questions. What is your pet's name? What's your favorite color? Where did you go to high school? Because especially in the case of high profile individuals, those kinds of answers are all over the internet. They've been in multiple interviews and they're very easy to, to uh, discern from the information that's already been provided. So. I just wanted to reassure everybody that there most likely 99% chance here has not been some kind of massive attack on iCloud. Instead, these are probably very targeted situations that rely on a very broad combination of things like security questions or reset codes, and they can all be things that are improved, especially through the use of two-factor authentication. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this or you're concerned about your security online, leave a comment and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching.